Back to Eastside RC and TMR Performance. Today, guys, is Sunday service time, so no RC stuff in this video. But I post, I dropped the video before this one last night, late last night, so you guys can uh, watch some RC stuff for anybody who doesn't want to hear what I have to say about the Lord's Word. Um, ultimately, I do this every Sunday, guys, it's because I love the Lord. You guys know that. I don't have to keep saying it. So, what we're going to be talking about today is some more marriage, continuation on the marriage, and this is uh, not so much um, talking about marriage, just uh, talking about how we are to live as we are called by God, okay? So we're all called by God in some way or another, uh, so when we give our hearts and, uh, and our faith to uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. So right off the bat, we're going to get into uh, some prayer. That's our little intro for today. Um, I want to thank everybody that is a first responder, uh, a cop, a veteran, a firefighter, you know, EMT, whatever, you know, the first responder guys. Thank you guys, man. We are remembering you guys on this Memorial Day. God bless you all. Dad, thank you so much for your service to this country. You've, uh, man, you know, thank God you made it through, man. Or else I wouldn't be here doing this today. <laughs> Old Pops, man, made it through Vietnam. I remember all the Vietnam veterans and all the veterans that are uh, veterans of all the wars and the war that's still going on today. So, unfortunately... So, dear Heavenly Father, I come to you right now, God. I ask you to please forgive me of my sins. I thank you for this time. I thank you for your blessings. I ask that you bless each and every person that is listening to me today, God. I ask that you prepare them this week, recharge their batteries with good health, faith, and let them be a light to others that they, that they encounter and to all the people that surround them. And dear Heavenly Father, I love you and praise you, God. And I ask all of these special, uh, precious things in your son's name. Christ Jesus. Amen. All right, guys, let's get at it. The topic today, right out of the Bible, is called Live As You Are Called. Okay? And I need to adjust this light back here because it is blinding me. Let's see. That's a little better. Okay. Now, the first... First, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to read you guys this scripture right out of 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 17 through 24. But first, I'm going to start with 17 and read that, guys. This is going to be kind of our opening scripture, all right? But as God has distributed to each one, as the Lord has called each one, so let him walk. And so I ordain in all the churches. What exactly does that mean? Well, let's find out. Previous verses contain Paul's instructions that Christians, Christians who are married should stay married and that single people should not necessarily seek to be married. In other words, people ought not to seek change to change their martial status as if one option or the other was mandatory. He was teaching, Paul was teaching that people had to, as a matter of Christian morality, maintain their current relationship statuses. In the upcoming verses, you guys will see that Paul expands on that thought. We will take a look at that. He now writes in the general principle of and applies to many other areas of life. Becoming a Christian does not mean automatically that God desires a person to completely change all of their relationships, occupations, or locations. Rather, speaking in general terms, Christians should stay as they were when God called them to their faith in Christ. All right? That's what God's talking about. 
The first opportunities for discipleship, service, and obedience are right there. He says in this verse, God is the one who has, who has assigned these particular places in life to his people when they are called to faith. God intends to make use of each of us. For the most part, that means serving and obeying in the exact positions and relationships we were in when he called us, okay? So some, of course, are called to go and move on, either physically or socially. But that's not the case for every person, all right? Paul intentionally adds that this isn't just a rule for the church in Corinthians. It is the same rule he teaches in every church. His examples of his of this teaching will include circumcision and slavery. So let's take a look at that, guys. Let's back it on up here. Back, back, back it on up. All right, right here it says, I'm going to read this rest of this for you guys. 18 tells us, if anyone wants to follow along, again, this is 1 Corinthians chapter 7. All right, verses 17 through 24 out of the New King James Bible, because you all know that's the one I love. It's got all the capitali uh, capitalized pronouns and all of the scriptures in there, okay, that are supposed to be in there. Nothing's taken out, nothing's added to. The Bibile, son, the Bibile. All right, so 18 tells us, was anyone called while circumcised? Let him not be uncircumcised. Let him not become uncircumcised. Was anyone called while uncircumcised? Let him not be circumcised. Circumcision is nothing, and uncircumcision is nothing. But keeping the commandments of God is what matters. That's what matters, guys. That's what Paul is teaching here. Doesn't matter if you've been circumcised or uncircumcised, okay? That kind of stuff, that's religious things. Saying that you have to be circumcised before you can be a certain way or before you can go to heaven or before you can accept Christ. That's a religious way of thinking, okay? Having to be circumcised, okay? God made us. God created us uncircumcised, okay? It's not, it's, you know, it's, it's not a necessity, okay? So... Let each one remain in the same calling in which he was called. Okay? Hear that? That's, that's pretty deep. Let each one remain in the same. Okay? It's not a sin if you remain uncircumcised. It's not a sin if you stay, you know. It's, 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 not, it's not a sin. <laughs> You're not going to be. Uh, I want to get backwards on my speaking there. Okay, 20. Let each one remain in the same calling in which he was called. 21. When, where you were called, were you called while a slave? Do not be concerned about it. But if you can be made free, rather use it. 22. For he who is called in the Lord while a slave is the Lord's freed man. Okay? We'll take a look at that too. What exactly does that mean? Likewise, he who is called while free is Christ's slave. 23. We're going to take a look at this, guys. All right. I'm going to break this down for y'all. You were brought, you were bought at a price. We all know that, that are Christians. Okay. We were bought at a price. Do not become slaves of men. 24. Brethren, let each one remain with God in that state in which he was called. All right? So I'm going to break this down for you guys. And we're going to take a look at some footnotes of this right here. Okay? So right off the bat, we're going to go over here to 1 Corinthians 7.22. Let's back it up. And I'm going to read 7.22 again for you guys. For he who is called in the Lord while a slave is the Lord's freed man. What exactly does that mean? Well, we're going to find out, guys. 
In the previous verse, Paul applied the principal message of this chapter to those defined as slaves. In the Greco-Roman culture, he has written that those who are married should stay married, and those who are single do not necessarily need to get married. Those who are circumcised or not should stay as they are. Now, he has added that even slaves should not make the primary focus of their lives changing that status. Though they should also, they should absolutely take the opportunity to become free if it comes along. Okay? Common sense. Paul calls Christians to elevate the status that they hold in God's eyes be above their status in the eyes of the Lord. Someone who comes to Christ as a slave under Roman law is seen by God as a freed man, a freedman. Okay, that's one word, F-E-R-E-E-D-M-A-N, freedman. He or she has been freed from the power and the penalty of their sin. By God's grace through faith in Christ, that human slave is free to share in God's glory forever and will eternally enjoy all the rights and privileges of royalty in the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. Where is the kingdom of God, guys? Do you guys know? The kingdom of God is wherever God reigns. If God reigns in your heart, then the kingdom of God is within you. The reverse is also true. Those who become who come to Christ as Roman citizens or a freedman must understand that. In the eyes of the Lord, they serve as slaves, as bondservants of Christ. They exist in the body and spirit to joyfully serve the purposes of God in this world and the next. Paul often referred to himself as a slave of Christ, holding that badge of honor high above his merely human status as a Roman citizen. For these reasons and in that context, Paul tells believing slaves not to become preoccupied with their human status. They should take opportunity when given, 1 Corinthians 7, 21, but, do, but don't need to see it as a mandatory, okay? God will use them right where they are for his greater good. That's one thing wonderful about God, man. He uses each and every one of us as he sees fit for his own good, okay? For his glory. It's all about glorifying God, not ourselves. You know, what I do when I stand up here, guys, this ain't to glorify the, myself, you know, I'm not looking for praise from you guys. I'm not looking for glorification. I've told you guys before, I'm nobody. I'm, I'm just a Joe Schmo, regular chip off the old block who loves the Lord and has been saved by Jesus Christ. That's, that, that's all, you know, I'm a normal, I'm a normal man. I'm just a sinner, just like everybody else. You know, I just have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and I love the man. All right. And I do this as an ultimate thanks and my way to give back to him. You know, this fills me up and provides for me better than church does. It really does because it forces me to get in the word, to study, to understand it, to share it so that I can deliver the whole truth to you guys and nothing but the truth in a loving manner with joy and grace. You know what I'm saying? So I, I really appreciate each and every one of you for listening. I really do. I thank you. I love you guys. You know, I really do. I love all my subscribers and each and every person I, I encounter with. And I forgive all the people that have done me wrong as well. You know, we're getting slandered and we're, we're being belittled and wronged on Facebook. It, it's okay. I forgive all those guys just as Jesus forgives immediately like that. I forgive as well, too, because I don't want to hold any bitterness in my heart against any one person, and I want the Lord to ultimately forget to forgive me. And God's word tells us he can't forgive us if we don't forgive, you know, so forgive one another, love one another, all right? My little positive uh, speaking for you guys there in the midst of this 
um, sharing. So let's go back and take a look at 723. You were bought at a price. Do not become slaves of men. 24, brethren, let each one remain with God in that state in which he was called. All right, so let's take a look at that footnote before we close out of here. What exactly does 723 mean? Well, let's break it down and find out. In, in words surprising to a non-spiritual mindset, Paul has written that even slaves who come to faith in Christ should not make the point of their lives to become freedmen. He has added, however, that if they get the opportunity to become free, they should take it. Paul wants all Christians, slave and free, to place a greater value on their position in God's eyes than in, their, in the eyes of the world. In God's eyes, all believing slaves are freedmen. All Christians are bondservants of Christ. God's perspective matters far more than our status during our short time we live on this earth before eternity. Okay? Now Paul follows his comments that Christians, though free in this life, are slaves to Christ. Because God purchased us, okay, body and spirit with the blood of Christ through his death for our sins on the cross. That's what it means to be bought as a price, God. I mean, guys, God gave us his only begotten son, okay, for, for a deliverance of our sins to counsel us, to heal us from sicknesses and spiritual bondage, okay? We have Christ Jesus as a deliverer, a comforter, a counselor, amen, amen. Thank you, God, for Christ Jesus. Now is the time we praise. Now is the time we shout to the Lord because we are forgiven when we ask for forgiveness, okay, guys? Be, take pride in that. Take joy in that. No, no, okay? Fill your hearts with joy, and know that the Lord forgives. You are forgiven, okay? You are forgiven. All right, so now Paul follows his comments and credits through, uh, let's see, through Lives of Slaves, yada, yada. Okay, now Paul follows his comment that Christians through free in this life are slaves to become Christ. God purchased us body and spirit with the blood of Christ through his death for our sins on the cross. Okay? We were redeemed by God. Ephesians 1, 7 and Galatians 3, 13 tells us that. Meaning that he took possession of us from our former master of sin and death. You know who the former master of sin and death is, guys? That's Satan. That's Satan. Basically, that tells us right there that... If we are not for God, we are living for Satan, whether we know it or not, whether we are the best person or not, whether we treat people so good or not, okay? If you have not accepted Jesus Christ into your heart as your personal Lord and Savior, you are walking with the devil, all right? You're, you're serving the devil. It, it, it's a, I know it sounds crazy. It sounds crazy, but we got two choices, man. It's Satan or Jesus, it's one of the two, you know, it really is. It's, it's, it's good or evil. Those are our choices. But God owns those who are in Christ. Paul now adds that we must not become slaves to men. It is possible, I said a minute ago, take pride in knowing that you are, have salvation. Don't be prideful. <laughs> you know, um, you, you don't want to boast, eh, I'm saved, you're going to hell. <laughs> you know, that, that's not how we're to be, guys. You know, absolutely not. Don't, don't, don't be prideful in that manner, you know. <laughs> it's good to have some pride, but pride can also be bad, too, in, in how it's portrayed and acted out, you know. So, it, ultimately, it's not good to be, to be prideful, you know. It's good to... Take pride in your work so that you do good work. 
You know, take pride in your love for another person. That's a good way to to uh, to be prideful. All right. <laughs> Sorry if I confused anybody. I got a little excited. Now we're gonna sum this up right here with, but God owns those who are in Christ. Paul now adds that we must not become slaves to men. It's possible to interrupt this as a command to believers not to sell themselves into slavery for the purpose of paying off debt or making a living. Some take this as a condemnation of going into debt. Even in modern, even in a modern sense of loans or mortgage, Romans 13, 8. In context, though, it is far more likely Paul is repeating the idea that God is a believer's true and eternal master, not the human being who owns them for now in this short life. All right, guys? So <laughs> that's great, man. That's really great. God is our true and eternal master. All right? He's not a slave owner, okay? <laughs> very cool. Very cool, Paul. Well, guys, that is going to sum up today's service time. I hope you all enjoyed it. Um, we're hitting the 20-minute mark again. So we're going to close in prayer and send you all out of here. Dear Heavenly Father, I love you, God, and I praise you, and I thank you for this wonderful time that you allow me to share your word, God. It's so enjoyable to me to read the scripture, read the footnotes, and understand the words that you are trying to get across to us, God, the words that you are laying on our hearts. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, thank you for the good word, the word. Jesus Christ is the word, and we thank you for him, God. We love you and praise you, and I ask that you send each and every person out, all the families, Lord, that listen. I want you to watch over their children, their, the people that surround them, their houses, their things. Let them have safe trips to and from work, at work. Let them be a light to others and send them out this week with good health and joy. We love you and praise you and ask all these wonderful, precious things in your son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. All right, guys, that's going to do it for Sunday service time. Y'all have a blessed one. I'll be back with some more brat action during the week. Eastside RC and TMR Performance is out. Uh -huh.